Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the village idiot, and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to the city of Leeds for part three of the mini series, and today we're looking at the one that remains. Now, this one's an interesting one because uh, we can only access certain parts of this one. We're welcome to walk along this road here, which is called Avenue Drive, up to the Triumphal Arch, major landmark on this one. But access is not permitted beyond the arch, except on footpaths and bridleways. Now, I don't know where the footpaths and bridleways will go. I've no idea. But we're going to find out as we explore Parlington. Arlington is a very small and very rural slice of Leeds to the west of Aberford and is primarily made up of the estate of the same name. The name Parlington means farm or settlement connected with Pirtle. Parlington is also a possible deserted medieval village. There used to be a hall on this estate, Parlington Hall, but it no longer exists. That said, the estate is still private and you're only allowed on certain designated footpaths and bridleways here, including this, the Avenue Drive, which leads to the Triumphal Arch. They're always quite tricky things to walk across, cattle grids. The hall was left to ruin after the death of Colonel F.C.T. Gascoigne in 1905, and it was largely demolished in the 1950s and 1960s, although the West Wing is still intact. Parlington Hall was the seat of the Gascoigne family, the very same we've talked about at great length over the past couple of episodes. The Parlington estate was acquired by the Gascoynes from the Wentworth family in 1546. The hall was modified by successive family members before it was eventually abandoned. Sadly, after it was abandoned, the incremental demolition between the 20s and the 50s destroyed any ability to determine the age of the earliest parts of the property. Most of that seen in any photographs is later than the 17th century. So there are some remains of some old buildings here. You can see one right there behind this tree. And also I've noticed there's some kind of ruined building there close to those trees. Now, I don't know if there's a footpath that runs past that, but I've just seen some people walk from there across here. So I'm, I'm figuring there might be a footpath I can use on the way back. We might be able to have a look at that. Sometime after 1905, much of the contents and smaller architectural features of Parlington were transferred to Lotherton Hall, which now contains much more Gascoigne memorabilia and is of course open to the public. The estate was used by the army during the First and Second World Wars. There were structures built during the Second World War and some of them are still in existence, constructed by the soldiers of Number no. 3 Vehicle Repair Depot, part of the Royal Army Ordnance Corps. The Parlington Estate holds a monument to the independence of the United States, built by Sir Thomas Gascoigne, last of the Gascoigne family bloodline. It's just one of a number of features of the estate that are Grade 2 listed. It was designed by Thomas Leverton and was built around the end of the 18th century. It commemorates the victory of the American colonialists over the British in the American War of Independence. An inscription on both faces of the arch reads, Liberty in N America Triumphant, and there's a date in Roman numerals, MDCCLXXXIII, the year 1788. The arch is thought to be modelled on the Arch of Constantine in Rome. Whatever it's modelled on, whenever you see the Parlington Estates logo, you'll see the arch too, as it's used as such. Okay, so the uh, Triumphal Arch is as far as you can go down this path because at the second cattle grid that you'll meet here, there you go, Parlington Estate, private, no access, can't go any further. And annoyingly, I haven't seen a footpath that leads along this parkland either, so I won't be able to get a, a, a good look at that ruined building either, which is a little bit annoying. But there we go. Now we're walking along a bridleway from Aberford back onto the Parlington Estate. The lane may be a bridleway, but historically, 
horse-drawn cobble traffic used this on its way to the village distribution point for onward travel to the local market. The lane was later developed into the private Aberford Railway, commonly called the Fly Line, to transport the coal from the Gascoigne's pits to Garforth. The railway closed in 1924. Nowadays this is a popular rambling and cycling route and I met a number of people along here on my walk. So, so far we've seen an arch, very important historical landmark, and where we're walking now is another footpath, literally just to the south of the one that I walked down a few moments ago, the avenue. Now this is actually a bridle path, and you, uh, you join this in Aberford, close to, not far away from where the tri-point is that we mentioned in that episode. And we're going down here to see a tree, believe it or not, a tree, which I know is not really a historical landmark, but it's still very interesting for a couple of reasons. Even though it's a walking only route, there are some buildings along here, some of which belong to the Parlington Estate. On a gatepost here, there's a handy map showing us where we can walk, and this also told me part of the route was closed. We'll get to that shortly. You have to stick to the footpath too. The woodlands that surround this area are private and all part of the estate. Here's a bit more history as we make our way down this path, which pertains to one of the structures we'll see in a moment. After Thomas Gascoigne's death, a man named Richard Oliver, who would take the Gascoigne surname and eventually own Lotherton Hall, was important to Parlington. He would continue the racing interests of Sir Thomas, winning the St Ledger in 1811 with Soothsayer and in 1824 with Jerry. He was High Sheriff of Yorkshire in 1816 and 1817. He would build this bridge, it's called the Light Arch, and it has a much darker, spookier brother, named the Dark Arch, which is just a little further up Parlington Lane. Before we reach that though, here's the tree that we came to see, and it's quite the local landmark. Nellie's tree was voted English and British Tree of the Year for 2018. There's a board next to it which tells the lovely story of Vicstead and his dear Nelly, the lady for whom the tree is named. You'll notice it's in an N shape, grafted from two saplings to form the letter by Vic himself. Locals sometimes call this the love tree. Okay, so if you want to walk to Nelly's tree from Aberford, from there, that's where I started, it's 16 minutes through the light arch, and there is Nelly's tree. And I've just discovered on this map here, there's also something called the dark arch. It's only three minutes walk away, according to my map. So we're gonna go and have a look at that too while we're here. But that is Nelly's tree, and isn't it magnificent? Here then is the Dark Arch, a short curved tunnel along Parlington Lane reputed to be haunted. It was built in around 1813 to 1814 to shield the residents of Parlington Hall from traffic passing along the lane. That man again, Richard Oliver, was responsible for building it. This is still intact almost 200 years later, as is an underground ice house close by, a testament to Georgian brick construction. I'll tell you what, I can see why that's called the Dark Arch. I can't even see the other end. It's not open at the moment, obviously, because this is the part of the footpath that's closed, which we saw earlier, but wow. You know, it's a long tunnel when you can't see the other side. That is creepy, really, really creepy. Now we're back into Aberford for the final time, as parts of the village fall within Parlington's boundaries. We're only a short distance from Lotherton Hall here. This is a good chance to tell you about Parlington's demographics, but there's not much to tell you. Only 87 people live here, mostly in the houses and properties that fall within Aberford. The vast majority of the parish's 7.1 square kilometres is the Parlington Estate's wide open parkland. There's no average house price here either, but I can tell you that what's left of Parlington Hall is estimated to be worth £732,000 and Gamekeeper's Cottage is estimated at £404,000. 
Next up, we pass Priory Park. This is opposite the war memorial we saw last week. This is the home ground of the local football team, Aberford Albion, who currently play in the West Yorkshire League Division 1 for the 2021-2022 season. By all accounts, they're not doing too badly, sitting mid-table as of late January. So there are 18 listed buildings on the Parlington Estate and one of those listed buildings we're about to walk right past really close to it on the main road through Aberford and that would be the Gascoigne Arms Houses and they're right here behind these gate piers. Let's go and have a closer look at these. The Gascoigne Arms Houses, designed by George Fowler Jones, were built by sisters Mary Isabella and Elizabeth Gascoigne in 1844 to commemorate their father, that man, yet again, Richard Oliver Gascoigne, and his two brothers who died in quick succession. They are Grade 2 listed buildings. The Arms Houses are often confused by people imagining them to be medieval structures, perhaps a church or some other religious building. However, it's simply just an elaborate Victorian building in a Gothic Revival style, which provided homes for poor people. There's a chapel for them at one end and a dining hall at the other. The furniture that was used in the dining hall is these days at Lotherton, and it's probable that Fowler Jones designed the pieces too. And to finish off, this notice board is technically within Parlington because it's on the western side of the old Great North Road. Take this one off. Okay, time you guys had a picture bit for the parish of Parlington. Here it comes right now. mentioning as well the National Cycle Network the SUS Trans Route 66 runs through here runs through Aberford and Parlington and Lotherton come Aberford there you go right I am done with the three-part series around Aberford interesting little part of Leeds isn't it there's plenty more to come in the city I'll see you somewhere else next time I've been Andy and this has been the Parish of Parlington I've been the Village Idiot and I'm out